Hello and welcome back to another X-Wing Flight Game video from Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil, and for this video we are joined by... Andy Talbot. Hey Andy, how's it going? Yeah, good mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad. Absolutely excited to have you back on the channel. Yeah, um, hopefully it. we're going to have another good game for you to commentate over. Yeah, let's do so, it. Looks like today we have a Republic versus First Order game. So, I know that you're not that au fait on the Republic, and I am, so I'm going to steal the Republic list if you're okay Yeah, leave with it to that. the expert. <laughs> okay, so we have on our left Fraser flying the Republic with Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Delta 7 with R4 P17 and calibrated laser targeting. He is supported by Hound in the LA-80, running with Wolfpack, Plo Koon and the Diamond Boron missiles. We also have Oddball in the V-19 turret with Ion Missiles and Dead Eye Shot. And rounding out the list in the other V-19, we have Tucker with Ion Missiles. And what do we have on the other side there, Andy? Okay, so for the first order, we have a little bit of a swarm going on here. So we have... It's one, two Omega Squadron Aces in TIE FOs, and then we have, oh, sorry, is it three? It's three Omega Squadron Aces, good counting, in TIE FOs, and then two Zeta Squadron Survivors in TIE SFs. Uh, and then you've got, to, to lead that all, is uh, Gideon Hask in the G-Class Light Shuttle. Uh, and he has Agent Terex and Commander Pyre as both crew. All of the TIE Fighters are just as is, no upgrades, just as they are. Nice. So a, a bit of a variation on the classic swarm there. So we have a lot of TIEs, but obviously two variations on there. Mm -hmm. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go. They, they do look really impressive on the board. I love that stark black and white scheme for them. It's yeah. really nice. I'm just a big fan of the shuttle. Just really, really like it. Just a just a slightly different version of the Lambda. I think I prefer it just as a as a model. Um, not as familiar with it in game terms, but just the look of it. Just yeah, big yeah. fan of it. Big fan of it. But yeah, so obviously with with um, with Gideon, he's got the uh, Commander Pyre and Agent uh, Terex there. So a lot of stuff that kind of um, has a lot of benefit during setup. Um, and kind of diminishing returns as as the game goes on. So I think we can we, we're probably going to see a little bit of uh, early maneuverability, kind of using the speed and maneuverability of the ties there to try and strike quickly, make the most out of those stresses that he can give out at the beginning of the game, um, and also kind of like you know capitalize on those on those calculates from Agent Terex before he uh, becomes comes a cyborg. Absolutely. I mean, with Agent Terex, he does have that flip side to him so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if the flip side does actually become applicable in this yep. um, but I, I completely agree with those ties i think they're going to want to utilize that early negative effects for fraser and try and really capitalize on that um, i think with fraser he's going to want to try and get out of those arcs and try and hit at the side to avoid the multiple shots that he is potentially looking at having mm. coming at him absolutely how do you how do you think the uh there are the um republic list plays then so i think the republic I, I do like the republic list um the laat with the uh, v19s is a good strong list there i think what they're definitely going to need to do is really try and, as I said, get round the side of those ties and try and start picking them off one at a time as quick as possible to reduce mm -hmm. those guns coming in. I know with swarms that they might not have individually a lot of shots, but when those shots start stacking up, that's mm -hmm. where it does become quite dangerous, especially yeah. with green dice being fickle beasts. And death definitely by a not. Cuts, right? Yeah, death by a thousand cuts, and that's the danger when you're coming up against a swarm. You might think, oh, one tie fighter, that's not too bad. But when you go, okay, two, th 
three, four, five TIE fighters, that starts to hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, so, I, I definitely would say you want to be flanking those as quickly as possible. So interesting, at least at least for me, is to see a, an LA-80 that isn't called Warthog. True. I mean, you're quite familiar with that one. Uh, a few of our games where I was testing out my tournament list, it basically was Warthog. So we do have Hound here, who is the Initiative 2 pilot. Um and different abilities to Warthog, obviously. So with this one, um, after a friendly small ship in your arc, so either the front or back turret arc, gains a deplete or strain token. If you have no tokens of that type, you may transfer that token to yourself. So really trying okay. to help benefit these smaller ships there. Yep. He still has the fire convergence. So while a friendly ship forms a non-turreted attack, if the defender is in your turret, arc you may spend one charge if you do the attacker re-rolls up to two attack dice which is yep. going to be quite good for him um so that should help him against this list quite well um hopefully get some re-rolls there for maybe obi-wan or obol or tucker absolutely um but i think definitely the la80 is is your big support ship with that last minute gun being the i2 he's hopefully going to be in there trying to mop up mm -hmm. and i think what he's going to really want to try and be utilizing is those diamond boron missiles that he's got there um so they're they're quite a new one they've not been out that long they're actually a dual missile slot so it takes up two yeah. slots on there not many ships can actually run them but with the diamond boron missiles you need to have the target lock you can spend one charge after this attack hits you may spend another charge if you do each ship at range one of the defender with agility equal to or less than the defender rolls one attack die and suffers one hit or crit damage for each matching result so it's definitely a, a it? <laughs> yeah it's a bit it's a bit of an anti-swarm missile there yeah absolutely. so phrases going to hopefully be trying to get the off as early as possible. Kind of um, just a, a souped up version of cluster missiles, isn't it? Because it's everybody within that range. Yeah, it's um, it's a much more powerful cluster missile. Yeah. Um, it's five points, and obviously it takes up two missile slots, so there's very few ships that can actually run that. Yeah. So you're looking at the LAAT, the K-Wing the bomber and I believe the HMP are the only four ships that I know that could actually outfit themselves with that. Okay. So a small list that could actually take that. Um, so I think we'll just quickly have a look there. I think that Wes actually did miss his trigger for Commander Pyre right at the beginning of the game. But being a casual game, um, Fraser actually allowed him to place that onto Helm there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Hound hadn't done a red maneuver prior to that, so it doesn't actually have much of a game effect at the moment. No, that's fair enough. It's always nice to see. But yeah, I think those, um, it kind of answers my question then after knowing a little bit more about what those diamond boron missiles are doing. We're uh, seeing ion missiles um, on both of those V-19s. Obviously, yeah. you know, to, con to control that swarm a little bit more, um, Get them going in that same direction and, and hopefully being able to hit them when they're in that cluster makes makes a lot more sense now definitely and i think fraser is he's a big fan of the ion missiles and he does like to use those as the control element of mm. if he can get them off and he know that way he knows where the enemy is going to be especially with obi-wan who a lot of people in a list like this he's your flanker so it's good if you can be like, all right, I know exactly where he's going to go. You can really utilize Obi-Wan a lot more. Yep. Especially he's got calibrated laser targeting. So he wants to get you in the bullseye to get that additional focus result there. Absolutely. Interesting. Looks like just going for a straight on duel uh, yeah. early on in the game here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It is interesting. I mean, going for a straight-up joust there, I know that the Torrens have more health overall than the Omega Squadrons. Mm -hmm. 
but the Omega Squadrons have shields, and sometimes I think shields. I I take a shield over a hull any yeah, day because it gives you a bit of crit coverage there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely agree with you. I think I mean just just in total. Obviously, at the moment you see kind of like you know it's, it's not we're not looking at a one on one joust there no. are we we're looking at one of the v9 teams just turning straight up the gut yeah <laughs> it's about to get attacked by four different tie fighters five at this rate i think yeah so it's definitely going to be interesting i mean i would add well hound has already moved and did not go yeah. very far so it'd be interesting to see where oddball goes if he is going to try and support tucker there otherwise Tucker's in a little bit of trouble, I think. Yeah, um, I would say so. And I definitely would not want to be staring down five TIE Fighters. No, no, I think he's about to be staring down a shuttle as well, in a minute as well, just for good measure. Um, yeah. But yeah, it should be interesting. I mean, um, you got you got to imagine that Obi-Wan's going to be storming down that bottom board edge on the screen and, and trying to get around the flank. Um, yeah. Tucker can get a couple of shots in with Oddball on one of the two TIE fighters on the right-hand side there. Still in arc of um, Hound, so still get the fire convergence, so they can still be yeah. pretty um, useful. It all um, comes down to if Hound has that front... SF in range as well. Absolutely. But yeah, I do, I do agree. You'd be looking, you'd definitely be looking at those re rolls there from Hound. Mm. I think so he is. I think I, I would I would say yeah from here. And um, I think you want you want to be I think you want to be aggressive with Obi Wan. You want to you want yeah. to get in the side and start getting that damage in. You don't want him to yeah. be. Like that, there can be that risk if you think, oh, I, I need to keep him, I need to keep him safe. So you play it yeah. cautious. But I, I think that in this one, you're outnumbered quite heavily. Yeah, you need to start getting that damage in quickly. Absolutely. And it looks like we are getting a bit of that there from Obi Wan. He's just force boosted yeah. round, so he's looks like anticipating getting in there quite quick. Oh, yeah. Just out of range there of Gideon. That would have been quite nice to get an early, get an early shot off there on yeah, to Gideon. Do you think he could have boosted in barrel rolled? Uh, I think barrel roll might have actually put him in arc of that tie fo there. So this mm. this uh, although i say to go aggressive i think at the moment that might be a good one because i think he'd have had two shots coming back in at him so save him a little bit and then come back in but it looks like we're getting an ion missile shot from oddball and we've got two hits and a focus there hmm. Love the new graphic. Look. yeah it, got very tired of struggling to be able to see what was happening there, so I was able to put the <laughs> graphics on, making it easy for everyone. And that's two oh. of A's back, so yeah. what you needed exactly what he wanted. So, no ion shenanigans just yet. And in reply, just check that's so close. I don't think Gideon quite no, Gideon doesn't have Obi Wan in shot, so Obi Wan did play the cautious move, he didn't. He didn't get a shot, but he's also not getting shot. So I think we might see some focus firing in there on Tucker now. And that uh, Tucker getting the focus there. So after a friendly ship at range 1 to 2 performs an attack against a ship in your front arc, you may perform a focus action. So that's where that focus is coming mm -hmm. from there for Tucker. Um, but two of A's means he avoided that single hit there. Interesting. So would you focus fire if you were the ties onto Tucker? Bearing in mind that he's obviously got that focus and that evade now, but you get more shots into him, or do you think you'd split your fire and try to get... Um, Oddball with a couple of shots. 
I think what I'd do is I'd be starting with the longest range of shots you have. Yep. And work. I think I'd have gone from the top and worked my way down and round. Yeah. Absolutely. Knowing that your SF and TFOs at the top there have probably only got Tucker. Absolutely. Yeah. If they take Tucker out, gravy. If they don't take Tucker out, then continue down and using some of the other ones yeah. until either you've run out of shots or Tucker's down, then you can move onwards. Yeah, agree. So, yes, he's got those tokens. I was, maybe those range threes could have got rid of some of those tokens, which doesn't seem to be the case, unfortunately. No. <laughs> but, I mean, you've also got slightly... You've got more shots able to go in at Tucker, so I would definitely say if you can focus that way, yeah, do so. Ooh. And also that could potentially... Oof, Rolling some good evades there on Fraser's side. Absolutely. Um, also, one of the advantages of that as well, then, is Tucker hasn't actually shot yet. So if you'd been able to take out Tucker, then that's another shot you're not actually having at you. Um, Hound has already shot. So getting a range two there from the Zeta Squadron. And that's... Two hits there. Although that worked out to actually switch there to Oddball because he did manage to get some damage in there. That's the first damage of the game. <laughs> Took a little while, didn't it? I mean, I've seen I've seen it take longer. I've <laughs> seen it be a lot slower, but. I mean, this one, I mean, they're right in each other's faces. I can imagine it's mm. going to be quite a quick one, like a lot of damage early in. Absolutely. Um, I and think that plays into the first order's hands, right? You know, trying, yeah. to get, trying to get in there, more calculates to work with, um, activating while you've still got the, the stress on on uh, on your ships from Commander Pyre. So yeah. makes sense. Definitely. Yeah. You gotta um, imagine that you would have been, you would have expected a little bit more damage to uh, to to Tucker up there though. Oh, absolutely! I think he was very fortunate there. His dice were like Wes was rolling some good dice there, mm. but Fraser's matched that almost like point for point, which is it happens not very often. Oh, that's a good oh. two hits. And Wes showing that also his evade dice are <laughs> running very good. <laughs> These are some really These good evade dice. dice. I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be happy either way at this point. Uh, I, think. I think I might offer them a few quid to have them off. Yeah, them. right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've seen. Well, I, I know someone that could do with those dice, and that's Quinn from the last game because his evade dice. Um, we probably should have kept a tally, but they rolled more blanks than you get in a. Uh, in a notepad of paper. <laughs> That's an awful saying. Yeah, it was awful, but <laughs> we went for it. But yeah, I mean, la last game, last you game. You need that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> last game, Quinn, Quinn's evade dice were not rolling very well. He could have done with some of those there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, all in all, one point of damage each side there. It's a lot less than I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, was, I was definitely expecting this to be a... A, a quicker start than that, um, right. but yeah, like you said, it's luck of the dice, right? I mean, at that point, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised to to necessarily see um, Tucker off the boards. Um, yeah, I know he's got one of aid. I know he's got um, then the focus, but still, there's enough enough dice there, enough firepower that concentrated all on him. I think you you could have legitimately seen him taken off in a turn, but. Not to be. Obviously, good news there for Fraser. Um, yep. But yeah, so it'll be an interesting one now. Um, yeah. To see who can keep as many ships in, in arc as possible. Um, Obi-Wan's, I, I think, is in a great position. Um, I wonder whether or not you refocus and try and get into Obi-Wan, but then that, I think that leaves you a little bit vulnerable to just some slow-moving... Torrents and that, and that LA eighty. I'm not sure I know what I'd do in this point. To be honest with you, I think for me, I would 
understand that Obi-Wan is going to flank ground. Um, ignore him. Yeah, I think I potentially try to ignore Obi-Wan at the moment and just concentrate on that big block of ships you've got in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, Obi-Wan has got the force, he's really manoeuvrable and squirrely, so it's going to be harder for... like Wes isn't going to be able to react to that as quickly because Obi-Wan goes after everyone else and he's got that the ability to double reposition. Yep. So he can see, right, you're, I know exactly where you are, so I will boost barrel roll and then use the force and everything. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's quite tricky there, but I think the best option would be to just slow roll in now and try and keep as much as many of those torrents and the LA-80 in your guns as possible and just hope for some really good range one shots to focus Mm -hmm. them down. So, I mean, most of most of Wes's forces will be shooting before Tucker and Hound, so except that Oddball's going to shoot you first and then try and see if he can take out Tucker so that he's not going to get the chance to shoot back. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you... I mean, for Fraser's side, I think you could use Tucker as... Tucker could really just punch himself into the mix with those three up the top. If he moves fast enough, yeah. he might he might be able to get in there, block he them. bank to block them up or something. Yeah, block them up, stop them from getting actions, reduce one shot coming into Tucker, and then get a good range one shot back at them. Mm-hmm. Or even potentially, even potentially, he could sort of too hard down the board to block the th- block the two and the G in front of him, lining up some good shots for Hound and Oddball. Yeah. So he's got the potential to be a spanner in the works for Wes. Interesting. Ooh. Big maneuver there from Wes. Yeah, get up mean I think that's the same same thing that we were just talking about Fraser doing with um with Tucker. With Tucker, to be fair, which uh, makes sense. One of the advantages Wes has here though is if Oddball and Tucker decide to go over, those SFs, they've got their turret arc in the back. So it effectively gives them a front and back arc. Yes. So that's actually really, really nice and like really clever play there. Mm, absolutely. So let's see. Oh, it looks like Tucker might have actually... Also, Tucker does clear that. So he was doing that bank that we anticipated. Mm-hmm. Let's see how that affects those Omega squadrons up there. I think the LA-80, regardless of what he's doing, is a big fat bump, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like he actually went for a self-bump there, if we go with the straight. Yeah. Unless he forgot that Oppel went after, but... No, I think I think that would be a deliberate self bump there. Yeah, I mean, maybe he expected the the jam. Yeah, I mean, so clears the, clears the stress, which is quite good exactly. for him. Clears the stress, stops him bumping into the jam, so gets him a gets him a range one. Oh, that was good. Ooh. That's not a bump there. Wow, that two four just misses Tucker there. That. Tucker's not in a good position. He has he's not. So far, he's got two range one shots right into him, and I can mm. anticipate he's going to have a third range one shot <laughs> when <laughs> that Omega, other Omega Squadron moves up. I think. Is he bumping? Yeah. That's the Let's question. see what he does. And even if he does, yeah, I mean, he's bumping. <laughs> that that's three range one shots right there. Ouch. Yeah. Not happy days for Tucker. I mean, you need to give him a new paint job, I think, if he uh, if he survives this round as well. Oh, yeah. Definitely, you need to promote him to I3. Oh, we have yep. some damage oh, there. down. It's down. Oh, now now we have a tie ugly instead. One damage. <laughs> At least it'll make it easier to identify that one. 
But um, that's, again, that's also a really good position that he's got those there. Um, might just block Oddball. Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't, gives him a really good shot in on Hound. It looks like Gideon is anticipating Obi-Wan coming around, so... He's, he's doing, he's actually, he's doing a little bit of what I said, concentrating on the main, main block of them, but then just leaving one just to sort of... Yeah, slight potentially, Yeah, potentially spoil everyone's day. And how far does Obbul make it? As far as a bump. There you go. That's not that's not where you want Opal right now. It is not. So the diamond um diamond missiles. The diamond uh, borons, the, yeah. Diamond borons. Do they they just affect enemy ships, right? Or so no. each each, each ship, ship each ship at range one. So he doesn't have the target lock, but this is not where you want to be shooting your diamond borons right now. <laughs> oh, of course, he bumped, didn't he? So he couldn't, yeah. he couldn't do an action. Sorry, yeah. yes. And Obi-Wan looks like he's likely trying to get himself out of arc there. Yeah. Which I don't think he's quite managed. Very on brand. Very on brand. <laughs> we love to see a bit of out of arc in our gaming. <laughs> So it's it's got a really nice range one there, and the calibrated laser targets it would be on. I'd be I'd be tempted to stick a focus on there and go for that. Absolutely. But we will see as to whether he's worried about getting. So going for a boost instead, playing a bit more defensive. Interesting. Personally. Yeah, I would have taken that shot. Yeah, I I think right now, given the position where everything else is, you need to be getting damage in early. Yeah, all those all those extras the obviously the extra shots, like you said, from the calibrator laser targeting. It's only two evades. Um I think you take that. Yeah. Because that, that would have given you a great shot there. You'd have had three shots for range one plus the calibrated laser targeting yeah. which you'd have taken the focus to guarantee that there you're shooting first I mean what you take three shots back yeah you take three shots back and okay so he's managed he's managed to sneak he's got a shot in on the S on the S uh, the FO at the back there okay but oh that's disappointing. Oh. Do you spend the force to try and get one knowing that it's a range three shot, so it'd be a lot of Yeah, I don't no. think it's, I don't think it's worth it. No, I didn't spend the force. I think that was a a bit of a missed opportunity there. And especially you've got tuck you've got Opal as a range one there on the G class. You could have got quite a bit of damage in there. Yep. So, we we, go. so hit, hit focus. No tokens to change it. So we could see both the shields off here for Gideon and spending that calculate. And uh, no damage. Still getting them good dice, though. Look at that. He, he really is. So let's see. It looks like we've got Gideon going into Opal. I think that's the right choice there. Mm -hmm. uh, hit, hit, focus. And... Oh. <laughs> Green dice just... Oh, hold on. I don't know what's happened. Might have a bit of a might have a bit of a miss on the dice there. It looks like there was actually some damage go through. Okay. Oh, it looks like we actually had a fuel leak. 
into a wounded pilot. Oh, okay, so... Dice didn't quite display that, but we've actually got four damage on our ball, so... Wow. That was... Okay, that was a perfect shot there from Gideon. You can't really deny that. That was good. I mean, yeah, you take that. Yeah. So, and I definitely think with your uh, your SF later, you definitely want to try and finish him off. Oh, We've like got that. the FO onto Hound there. Yep. So that's hit focus. Spending the focus to choose mm -hmm. violence. I mean, especially with the LA80, he's only got one one evade, so I think you definitely if you if you've got the opportunity yeah. to guarantee it going through, Absolutely. why not? Interesting. So what oddball using that hound's ability to take uh, a strain? That's actually wolf pack. So after that's a friendly it. ship at range zero to three defends if the attacker is in your firing arc, the defender may gain one strain token to acquire a lock on the attacker. So he's there looking at going... I mean, it's interesting that he's taken, taken a strain on himself there because I think he's definitely going to get a shot coming back at him in a second. Mm -hmm. And looks like there was one shield off of Hound there. And then Hound is taking the strain to lock that SF. Maybe he wants to try and get those Diamond Borons off and not really care that Oddball's there. Hit, crit, crit. Ouch. Wow. Two evades there, so that's... <laughs> These one. dice are just ridiculous, wow. aren't they? That is absolutely crazy. And it was a panicked pilot for... Tucker, I mean, I'd be panicking looking at what I've got coming down on me there. Absolutely. But yeah, some really good evade dice in here. Just good dice all round. Yeah. Right. I mean, it doesn't didn't look like it in the first round, but just everything was everything was rolling. Yeah. Two hits yeah. again. Two hits. Oh, dice have finally started to fail. Oh, yeah. So that's some more damage into Tucker. So he could finish Tucker off here. He could finish Tucker and not ball off, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Depending on how he wanted to play it. And I think I'd be... I think I'd be tempted to try and do that. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, so that's... Three hits. Uh, yeah, one evade. So that's both of the V19s down to one hull. The, the, the made, the made up for it, made up for it from last time. We were like, oh yeah, you know, I think one of them will go this turn. So like, yeah. no, I just do, I just have both of them in, in, in the second engagement. It's yeah. fine. I think the, the tricky thing here is, I mean, I would definitely be tempted to try and take out Oddball because mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's down and evade. And yeah, we took out Oddball. I mean, I was about to say, obviously, Hound's got the strain, so he's got no evades, but yeah. taking out Oddball, 100% the right call. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of points as well. It's 35 points on your side, and plus you've got the 15 from Tucker, Absolutely. giving yourself a really strong, solid lead there. So we still have Tucker and Hound to actually take some shots, but that is that definitely makes up for that first turn. Do you think that now... Um... So is is Hound, Hound by the looks of it is used Wolf Pack to gain strain on himself and gain that lock. So are we thinking yeah. 
So yeah, diamond. Definitely think of diamond boron. Yeah. Uh, is going to use the target. Yeah, I think it's going to use that target lock. I mean, I would after that roll. Oh, no, to be honest, actually, I think that was Tucker taking a shot, which was not great. Ah, okay, right, yeah. So that was actually Tucker. Tucker right. That was Tucker taking a shot. So evidently, that panic pilot he got really did panic him. It's all all, all over the place. All right, here we go. Diamond missiles. Diamond board. Okay, spending that target lock. That's not too bad. But that's better. Wow. Three of eight. So, oh. I mean, I, I don't know what phrase it can do, it, as we were. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'd be, feeling a, I'd be feeling a little bit salty at that. Oh. That's not. Oof. And he he's not in a great position now either. No. I mean, those ties are very manoeuvrable, so I wouldn't be surprised if I see, if we see some talons or k turns out of them just to pop themselves in behind Howard yep. and just really focus up. Absolutely. I mean, the only ship on Wes's side that isn't that manoeuvrable is the G-Class. But it's in there just for the support, just to pass out some tokens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for you, mm -hmm. looking at the Republic's position, I know you don't really play Republic that often, but if you were in a position like this, what would you be thinking? <laughs> Other than, oh, darn. Keeping this PG? <laughs> let, let, let's try and keep this PG. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tuck, Tucker's gone, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything you can do with him. He's he, he's he's stressed, so he's he's flying off and might get a range three pot shot in at some point, but can't necessarily even see that happening with him. Yeah, um, at some point next week. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, Obi's Obi's going to be the one that's going to be the damage dealer, I think, this turn because I can I can imagine. I can imagine one of those ties looking to try to block up any kind of quick in-turn manoeuvre for that LA-80. Um, yeah. And the others doing what you say, trying to get behind him, get get some shots in uh, and start start taking taking that away. Because obviously with the um, with with that lack of um, evade dice, just any of those shots are going to be are going to be landing. So just start taking that out. Um, I'm. I mean, let's have a look at the, the, the dial for the LA-80. I mean... It's not a terrible dial. It's, it's, it's not. Only got, it's only got two blue manoeuvres, which are both straights. So exactly. to get rid of that strain, he'll need to do a one or two straight, which well. puts him <clears throat> right in front of that gas cloud. I mean... Yeah... It's interesting because you can still obviously gain um, target locks for those diamond borons um, through wolf pack, right? Yes. So is it if he is targeted or if just another ship? So after, after a friendly ship at range zero to three defends, if the okay. attacker is in your firing arc, the defender may gain one straight token. So okay. it all depends on where Obi-Wan ends up in relation to Hound as to whether he'll be able to actually even trigger that. Yeah. Because I think Obi-Wan is going to be moving more up the board than Hound would like to be able to trigger that. So do you think that he just does a three straight here? With <sighs> with Hound, because if the, if the, you think the ties are going to try and get behind you, you've got that rear arc still. Yeah. Um, if you don't think or you think you want to maybe concentrate some fire with Obi-Wan, maybe change your... Um, obviously, do the blue and then see whether or not... You, and then change your, your turret arc into the middle. Yeah, then spin um, your arc. Yeah, that could, that could be an idea, actually. Um, 
With with Obi Wan, it's interesting, right? So, do you think they're gonna like? I mean, I would expect those two ties to come that are that are currently on Tucker. Um, yeah. To for me, probably either bank down towards Obi slowly or turn up the board um, or left of the screen um, and flip back. So get some of those those talons in, maybe even a, a yeah. Yeah, I I, I think get, they get they they would like up the boards to to flip them around a bit. Yeah, I think they'd like to try and get some talons in, maybe get round the back of get round the back of Tucker, maybe just finish him off, or Ooh. they could just go straight for the end. okay shooting violets there. So that's I'll be honest with you, I didn't I didn't think that was. That was even an option. I thought he would have bumped the the second tie there. So yeah, so that's quite good. That. It's quite a nice position to be because it means he's going to be able to get some shots to basically rotate the arc there. And okay, rotating the arc. So I think he's he's either hoping to get maybe some shots on the G or some mm -hmm. return shots on those SFs. Yeah. Let's see what this FO does if it just flips over the top, and I think that is going to be a K turn. And the nice thing about that is he's out of he's out of Hound's arc there as well, so he's basically got a free shot. Okay. Now rules question: So that th that three hard is a stress is a red maneuver. Yes. So does that strain go to a stress or? Does he also just get a stress token? You'd have box? you'd have both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you would have both, so mm, yeah, there you go. Trying to those ties at the top there trying to block out um Obi Wan coming up the board. Yeah. So you've got you've got one definitely trying to react to that. And is that Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Fits round that rock perfectly and gives himself a lovely, lovely range one target lock <laughs> shot. <laughs> and he's and he's out of arc now that the uh the turret yeah. as well. It's perfect that. <sighs> he's got a good what's the G class doing though? Does the G the G shut off Ah, oh, it's a shame that was a bump there, because that would have been absolutely brutal but to be honest I mean he's got mm -hmm. four shots coming in at him anyway he does so I mean that's a kill box if ever you saw one right yeah <laughs> that is a definite kill box mm. now, I, think in, I think in hindsight I liked my blue three straightforward yeah <laughs> It definitely would have been. I mean, it would have it would have taken the G class out of the game for quite a while as well. Yeah. Now, does Obi Wan want to stick there, or is he? Okay, so Obi Wan's going for the avoiding being shot method, but that does give him bullseye on that FO. Yep, couple of shots in on that FO now, isn't there? Yeah. I think I'd definitely be looking just to take the focus. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yeah, there we go. That's definitely the choice I would have taken. Because it should get him... It should be avoiding being... Sh I, it's tight, but I think he might be avoiding being shot there. Yeah, I think he, he, he's just going to be out. Yeah. So, it's a nice barrel roll, that. So just looking at moving the calculate over, I'm going to give that to... Gideon's going to take that calculate for himself. Interesting Brilliant. choice. I think I'd, I'd have been tempted to give it to the stressed FO, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that. 
I don't think that shooting at Gideon would be the right option for Obi-Wan. No, I don't either. Because they're just checking to see... Bullseye, aren't they? Checking range and then checking bullseye. So it's hard to tell there, but I think that's a range two. But we'll see how many dice he pulls out for that. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to be hound right now. No. No, I mean, definitely not. Especially with him being strained. Mm -hmm. The first shot, whatever goes through on that, is just pure damage. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, the, the strain will disappear after that shot because it, it is removed after yeah. the first time you defend. So that's, a, that's not too bad. So let's see. So we've got three. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh. Uh, that looks like that's into Gideon. And. Oh, we've gone into Gideon. More hot green dice there. Wow. Yeah. Just Just right saying, whatever he needs. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's basically, he's basically Qui Gon in his dice there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't think I've seen that many evades rolled in a single game before. No, no Wes has got to be loving his dice right now. Yeah. Absolutely loving his dice. Oh, and then he's definitely going to be loving it when he's just pulled out <laughs> three hits on <laughs> Hound and uh, Hound has no evades there. Wow, that target lock, very well thought out there. Wow. So, how now has the advantage of one of eight dice again? <laughs> Ooh, steady. So let's just double check. Is that range one? So there's another three more coming in. Oh, just the one hit. Oh, about, to be fair, about time. Yeah. <laughs> he rolled under two on three dice. Yeah. And it was a blank, though, from oh. Fraser. Oh. I mean, if he'd have put that calculate over, that would have been quite nice because then he'd have been able to get two. No, oh, I think he's out. Oh, yeah, I think he is out. So close. No, they called it as in. Oh. Two hits. Oh. <laughs> oh. Where's? Stop it, Where's? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, spending a force to get one of aid. Wow. Where's 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 he just he's just put the death star everything's like right I'm gonna I'm gonna get damage <laughs> and more and more. Uh, oh, May I think Fraser I think just needs to dust this one off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get on to the next game to be honest. Yeah. Oh. Uh, spending Plo Koon's force there to uh evade one but ouch and the final shot coming in and he took the strain he took the hmm he wants those oh, missiles the... doesn't he he wants that target I mean okay he only suffered one there but that was that was dangerous taking that strain losing your evade absolutely is that it's... every sh is that every shot though is was that the last shot that he was that was take? that was the last shot he was going to take and oh, okay, okay so his target lock gives him the opportunity to re-roll it so and oh oh wrong numbers type there and where's just when no <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of that round. <laughs> that that was painful. That was very painful there. Not for Wes. Oh no, no, for Wes. Wes loved it. <laughs> I mean, Wes has currently taken one point of damage. Crazy. That's yeah, I mean I've seen some crazy shenanigans, but that is Yeah. The First yeah, Order really dice. are all over this. Honestly, those dice, there's something else. Keep them. 
<laughs> Never lose those dice. Yeah. But no, it has been. I mean, it's been good, good flying from Wes as well. Obviously, that that kill box there. Um, you know, got got him half points on on Hound in a turn. Mm. Um, and yeah, obviously it was was more than more than happy just to kind of like move away from from Tucker, which I think was the right choice. Um, you can always come back to him later and finish him off probably this round, I'd imagine. Yeah. Uh, just for those extra points. And I think he's done what you said as well quite early on, which is basically just, you know, what Obi-Wan's going to be annoying. Um, I'll take some shots at him where I can, but ultimately I'm, I'm going to ignore him for now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it has worked out very well for Wes there. And even in the position he's in, you've now got Hound facing up the board with mm -hmm. a particularly limited dial and you've got three ships that can quite quickly and quite easily just follow him That's even the G class can follow round up there as well mm -hmm. and you've still got two ships potentially that are in a position to turn around quite nicely to Harry Obi-Wan Absolutely so, I mean the, the, the three ships on uh, on the left hand side of the screen the three ties there you know can afford for a turn basically just to to move at a slow pace yeah um uh, and just keep everything in front of them really um and just shoot where they need to um the only question would be whether or not we see kind of some um some um sloops potentially from that uh that tie in the middle, or just basically see where he's going. Maybe a, a, a hard left to try to block up any short maneuvers for Obi Wan. Yeah, I mean that is a possibility, but I, I think right now it's a case of mop up the last two and then have everything set for Obi Wan. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, what could be quite a good play here from Fraser is if he does a stop with the LA eighty to try and force some bumps in there. Because mm -hmm. that could be quite handy. I don't. He wouldn't be able to bump everyone, but if the G-Class was doing quite a slow manoeuvre, he could be forcing a bump there. Yeah. Does that? Oh, very nice. Oh, early. very nice. He, Wes has got this down. Yeah. And you can just expect the bump at the back and be happy yeah. with that. Like one bank in, maybe. It's just, I think one of the really good things here as well is he's he's sort of closing the kill box off a little bit, but also his ships are now getting in positions where it's going to make it tricky for the LA-80. In fact, I don't think the LA-80 can really get out of that. No. Where he is, the only, the only out maneuver he's really got is are too hard but that lands him on that rock or maybe or maybe now he could do the three bank up to the left but that that puts him right in front of that sf at the top this is this is very much set perfectly for wes mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely Yeah, so the LA-80 was trying to get out there. Got blocked up by that SF. And I think that's now going to be right in the way of where Obi-Wan wants to go. Yeah, oh, yeah, maybe. The only thing with Obi-Wan I was thinking is hard right and then boost, boost round left. Yeah, that is a possibility. I wonder if the, the, the G class just stops. Just double check the G. Has the G class got the stop on its dial? I'm not. It does, familiar. yeah. Yeah, I've got it up. Yeah, yeah. And if it does a stop, it's now not actually. It's not. Yeah, it's not bumping, is it? It's no. not in contact, so. But there was a 5K there from one FO, a deliberate bump there from the other FO. That kill box on 
Hound, sorry, Hound, but um, <laughs> your lifespan is now measured in minutes. Yeah. And the sloop there from, yeah, that essentially, Wes is ignoring Tucker. I mean, he's got one shot from the SF at the top there. Oh, we, we did actually. Just bump him. It did bump. Um, but he's got one shot on Tucker from the SF, but everything is now pointing downtown to... Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. One. Oh. And that's a bump into yep. the G class as well, so it's not even like he can get a good range one on, the, on Gideon there. So, I mean, I highly anticipate some damage going into probably that F most likely that FO there. Mm -hmm. And that is yep. the FO that has already taken damage. Yeah, you may see some points on the board for Fraser here. Um, I think it kind of delays the inevitable at this point. I'd be... I mean, just I suppose it depends, really. I mean, if, if, we, if Obi-Wan can take him out, then we've only got two going back into Hound. But then again, he's not rolling any... Um, he's still got the... It's still strain, got the isn't he? So, so the first I shot is straight through from a range one. Yeah, so that was a range two there. Oh, geez. So, yeah, yes. using two force. Where's put those dice away? <laughs> oh, that actually went on to the Omega Squadron there. So he didn't go for the FO, he went for the SF. Oh, sorry, he didn't go for the SF, he went for the FO. Interesting. Sacrificing that range one shot there for. Oh no, it would appear that uh, Gideon did bump. Gideon did do the he zero did do stop. stop. And two hits. And that's one left on Hound now. Oh. <laughs> so. Mop Hound up, and then everything back into Obi-Wan. Yeah. So, if he gets two hits here, that's Hound dead, regardless of what that's Hound rolls. Day. And he's actually taken the strain from Gideon to get an extra dice. Oh, is his luck run out? Oh, his luck oh, has run out. It's... Oh, he's gonna, have to, he's gonna have to spend another shot. So with this one, it's a range one into Hound. So that's, that's still not. What have we got there? One hit. It was enough. Oh. Nope, oh, really did explode. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even have to put a graphic on for that. <laughs> so, I mean, it benefits Obi-Wan slightly in that he's only going to have two shots back into him, not three. Oh, good. <laughs> so, small mercies there, I suppose. Uh, does he spend that final force to just every every set of three attack dice that Wes has rolled I swear it's a minimum of two hits yeah oh, that's not good that's not good and uh, the last shot there Straining himself to get that additional dice at the long range. Absolutely. One oh, hit. Oh, blanks will do it. Has he got? He's got one force. No. Nope. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's Obi Wan gone. Oh no. Oh, I thought he had a force left. 
Did he maybe just given up? So like, nah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not using the force anymore. Maybe, maybe he's gonna I'm go. gonna go be one with the force. Yeah, like, I don't want to use it up anymore. Oh, uh, that's two hits. Spend the focus. That's bye bye, Tucker. That is brutal. Wow. I mean, what can you say? Where's wow. flute? Like putting aside Wes's dice for the time being, because he's going to want to keep them fresh for his next game. Um, but Wes flew that really, really well. I think Fraser was very unfortunate with his dice, but Wes just flew that to perfection. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think I'm, I'm surprised Wes ended the game with all ties. I'll be honest with you. Everything on the table still. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right. I think, um, yeah, there were just some really, really nice maneuvers there from Wes, setting up a couple of kill boxes on, on multiple occasions. I think Fraser was probably a little bit eager to have that joust early on and just, yeah, just decided to to go full on there. I think keeping Hound a little bit more on the on the perimeter and trying to to pick and choose those shots a little bit more from long range, uh, taking out a couple of the swarm first before engaging. Probably wouldn't have been a better shout, but you know, you live and you learn. Yeah, absolutely. So it's one of those things, you, you learn from every game you play. I think Fraser should have been a bit more aggressive with Obi-Wan early on. Again, Wes flew that to absolute perfection. So absolutely. GG there, Wes. GG. Great game to watch there, really seeing the power of the First Order. Um, thank you very much for coming along and commentating on that one, Andy. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to, anytime, hopefully we'll be able to actually have you fly again with us on the board when all this lockdown rubbish is uh, over. And oh yeah, absolutely. We can get absolutely. back there. I have to, get, I have to get myself a load of ties now. So what we'll do, we'll wrap it up there. Great game. So again, as always, guys, um, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell to know when the next video is coming up. And we will see you again soon.